Okay, guys, so you are welcome back to Photographics Academy. All right, so today I'm going to be showing you one of the quickest ways you can work on your backdrops, on your studio backgrounds, and get an amazing result here. Yeah? So I know you've been seeing us do a lot of videos around it, but this one is exceptional. This is the background we're going to be using, and this is the image you are, we are going to be using. One of the beautiful things I love about this one is that the floor of the image is almost looking like the same with the floor of the background so it's going to be super easy to work on so the first thing i'm going to be doing is to expand the cropping of the image because i want the background to really really come in a lot so we'll just expand it turn on our content aware and press okay so once that is done the next thing i would do obviously is to separate the image from the background so i'm just going to quickly make a selection of our object so once the selection is made, make sure you are selecting inverse by right clicking and going to select inverse. Then make a duplicate of the whole image, right click one more time and go to layer via cut. So now we'll have our background on a separate layer and we'll have our image on a separate layer. So I'm going to be dragging this image over to this area. Then I'll come to my background, hold my control, click on the icon of the image. It's going to reload the selection. Then I'll go to select, go to modify and expand so what i'm trying to do now is i'm trying to fill up the whole background because if you look over here you'll notice it has a hole so once you click on fill select your content aware in the content and press ok it's going to just clean it off so now we'll have our image on a separate layer entirely and our background on a separate layer entirely beautiful so now let's get down to adding the backdrop we are going to be using so i think i'm missing a little step but we can fix that later i wanted to give her more space in the front because if you look at the background we are bringing in it has a lot of space here so if that doesn't work we'll have to take a few steps back or we'll generally expand the whole thing maybe probably by pushing her inwards or something so let's see how that works. I'm going to also give this background the same expansion. So I need it to have the same image size with my object. Yeah, something like this. Push it up a little, press OK. So once that is done, I'm going to unlock the layers, pick up my move tool and drag it and place it over my object like that. So just keep it here. Hold your alternate, click on the, just click on any of the edges so that this would appear. Then hold your alternate, click on any part of the image you want to place your anchor line for this one i'm placing it in the on her neck because i want that area to be the constant then every other thing scales in from there then i'll hold my alternate go to the edge and just scale it in now we can bring it down beautiful this is so good press enter the job is almost done so the next thing we need to do is to restore back her original shadow so considering the fact that they are both the same color we can actually just clean the floor off and get back the original shadow or we can just come over to this background here make a duplicate drag it all the way to the top desaturate it yeah so we don't we don't we know that we are not battling colors we can even slightly darken it down a little press ok then find a blend mode that allows you bring back the shadow without affecting what your background has i think i love what uh multiply did for me hard light is doing a good job but they are fading out my original background so i like what multiply did with this because it did not just give us the shadows it also darkened down the background we'll have behind her so i think this is too much I need to bring this down yeah so if you feel you still want the shadows to be a bit stronger you can now use your levels and clip the levels to the background so as we are darkening things down it's going to make the shadows even come out stronger. Now we can decide to check other blend modes and see if we get a better blend mode that will render it more, more professional. I like what hard light is doing. It's practically the same thing with what our multiply is doing, but let's stick with multiply. Yeah. Press OK. So I'm going to see reduce the opacity because it's darkening the whole thing down too much. OK, so sorry that wasn't the one i should reduce this one so this is it without the shadows this is it with the shadows so we are able to get the shadows back and still maintain a very good image now 
at this point you can even decide to change the background to any other thing it will still be maintaining this shadow and the settings we have used you can even decide to change the hue or the background you will still be getting these shadows where it is supposed to be and i think we are already done so the next thing i want to do is just to create a slight vignette effect behind her so that the whole attention also can be on the object so to do that i'm just going to use my curves i could still do that using uh camera roll, but let's just use my curve so i can see exactly what i'm doing then i'll pick up my brush make sure you are selecting a black brush or rather you can invert then introduce or you can leave it like that and remove whatever you want to do so i think we should remove all right so make sure it's a hard brush and just dab in the middle like this okay so we are good probably you might want to add the floor to what you did so just dab like this good then pick up your uh, your move to hold your shift and drag it down so what i'm doing is that i want to contain all the image within that vignette effect you can just apply it on the background you can apply both on the floor and the background so what i'm going to do right now is to smoothen out this vignette because it's looking way way too unrealistic so i'll go back to my curves icon then click on the mask again this will switch to properties then i'll just feather it out so you see that soft light that just goes that way but it's dark you are seeing it this is the before this is the after so we're able to bring attention to the center of the image and that is how you create this amazing effect last thing you what you might want to do is just apply a little global color grading to it although this is already looking beautiful i think i love the effect i got here so i just put this here the before the after this is too much still just bring it down beautiful okay so the before the after the before the after and that is how you did looking at the image i'm noticing a little bit of yellowish touch around the edges of the image which shows that the cutout was not so smooth because we didn't feather so what i'm going to do is i'm going to reload the selection on my image go to my select go to modify go to contract so i'm just going to be losing the pixel by 0 0.5 that should be enough to give us that edge press ok oh i think it's too low so we'll just use one press ok so you just pulls it in a little click on it and select inverse just press your backspace and you should deal with it and we are good to go that is how you do that my friend thank you so much for watching make sure that you follow us for more and please also make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel if you subscribe do turn on your notification bell to get notified every single time we drop a new video in case you want to gain access to this particular backdrop and you want to use it on your own images it's very simple all you need to do is just to comment it uh interested in the comment section and as well join our whatsapp community and you'll be able to get access to the backdrop thank you so much and see you on the next one